Hello and welcome to my presentation about acoustic modeling of the new type 4.3 ear simulator using Comsol Mozart Physics. Um, and thank you to HBK for inviting me to this 2022 HBK Electroacoustic Virtual Conference. My name is Mats and I'm working for Comsol. So Virtual prototypes uh, have become an integral part of the development process in the audio industry. And that's within, I would say the last 10 years and you really see an increasing demand within the last uh, four to five years. Virtual and physical models complement each other and you want to make sure that you can uh, simulate what you can measure and vice versa. So there's a great, or we saw a great demand from common customers of HBK and Comsol for a virtual or simulation model of the new type 4.3 ear simulator to make sure that you could actually do the, vir the same virtual uh, measurements and tests as you could with physical tests. And this was really the main motivation uh, for the work that I'll be presenting today. The animation to the right is a nice uh, eye candy. <laughs> it shows the acoustic pressure distribution at 20 kilohertz for a normal sound incidence on the type 4.3 ear simulator, including the pinna. So it's an open ear uh, situation and it's a high frequency response of the system, as you can see for the wave pattern also. A bit of background. This model is of the P57 Type 4.3 full band ear simulator. Uh, and the model includes the geometry of the ear canal as well as the pinna defined in the ITU P57 standard. And the model really tries to fulfill the geometry and acoustic requirements defined in the standard. Um, it's not a model of a particular commercially available ear simulator but it's uh, following uh, the standard and fulfills the standard just as commercially available physical ear simulators will do. They will try to fulfill the standard. The simulation model includes uh, interpolation data for an eardrum impedance, ensuring the correct acoustic properties of the ear. So the acoustic losses associated with the eardrum impedance are not included by simulating a full coupler or something like that. It's included by uh, a complex valued impedance. And we'll get back to that uh, during the presentation. The development of the model had two uh, main parts. First of all, it was uh, generating the geometry. So the geometry is constructed following the cross sections defined in the standard. And if you look at the sketch at the bottom. The standard defines a reference curve and then it defines uh, planes uh, normal to that reference curve at particular locations. And in each of these planes, uh, there's interpolation data for uh, the cross section of the ear canal and actually also of the, the pinna uh, in that particular plane. And then the idea is that you need to connect these planes to generate the geometry um, of the uh, of the ear simulator, and in our case, it's actually the remember it's the geometry of the air volume of the ear simulator since we are modeling the acoustics. And in Comsol, the cross sections are connected using uh, the so-called loft operation uh, that connects these cross sections in a smooth manner. The image to the right shows a meshed version of the ear simulator, uh, including the pinna, and this is uh, the surface mesh uh, used in uh, for particular simulation. So it's the surface mesh of the CAT representation. The second part is that uh, the ear simulator should also uh, have the correct acoustic response. That's of course very important. So the virtual simulator should of course also have the correct acoustic response. And uh, 
using uh, optimization uh, or curve fitting or whatever you want to call it, um, we computed an eardrum impedance such that the transfer impedance uh, of the virtual prototype was equivalent uh, or very close to the one defined in the standard. So this, the, the standard defines the transfer impedance from the reference plane to the eardrum. If you look at the sketch again at the bottom here, you can see the reference plane and the eardrum. And that's the acoustic signature of the system um, that you need to fulfill. Um, and we did that by uh, fitting uh, or computing uh, an eardrum, complex valued eardrum impedance. And with this impedance, the response or the transfer impedance uh, modeled or the transfer impedance of the virtual system is within plus minus 0.5 dBs of the transfer impedance uh, given in the standard. And the curve to the right shows the simulated transfer impedance. So I just want to say a few words about how uh, we computed or how we deduced this transfer impedance. Oh, sorry, this uh, eardrum impedance or the impedance of the eardrum. Yes. So we did that by, as I mentioned, uh, curve fitting or optimization. And when you do uh, an optimization, you need an objective. And the objective is the transfer impedance uh, from the standard. The control that we had in this case was the eardrum. So you could modify the eardrum impedance. And by modifying the eardrum impedance, you wanted to fulfill and get the correct uh, transfer impedance. And instead of just starting with some random curve for the eardrum impedance, we decided to start from uh, an existing model. And in this case, we chose the, trend, the eardrum impedance of Hude and Engel. And that's actually a model that was already implemented as an option in COMSOL. So by starting from, a, you, you could say, a physically correct eardrum impedance, you are maybe also, uh, it's maybe uh, more, uh, yeah, there's a higher probability that what you will uh, end up with is also a physically correct eardrum impedance, so to speak. So we used gradient-based optimization using the control function feature in COMSOL to modify the eardrum impedance, starting from the Hude impedance, Hude and Engel impedance, and then modifying until we got a nice match for the transfer impedance. The image to the right here shows the eardrum impedance of Hude and Engel, the magnitude and the phase. So here we see the results of the optimization. And the image to the left shows the magnitude and phase of the eardrum impedance, magnitude on the left axis and phase on the right axis. The blue curve was the initial condition, so to speak. So it's the uh, eardrum impedance of Hood and Engel. And the red curves are the optimized impedance values. Full curve is the magnitude, dashed line is the phase. And you see these light blue arrows, they show how um, the, the transfer impedance quantities were modified. So this was done completely automatically, of course, uh, with the optimization. The image to the right shows the objective functions. So with the dashed blue uh, black line, you see the initial uh, transfer impedance of the system, just applying the initial condition for the uh, eardrum impedance. The red line is the objective function, and the blue line is the optimized, so the response of the ear uh, after optimization. So this procedure and uh, how we computed this was uh, presented at DAGA uh, earlier this year. Uh, I presented together with Lars Bjorn Nielsen from HBK. So the culmination of all this work uh, was actually that there's now a model available to customers for download on the COMSOL homepage um, of the type 4.3 ear simulator model. So as I mentioned in the beginning, this was really based on requests from uh, common customers. So. I thought that was, yeah, first of all, it was a uh, nice uh, work to do because there was so many requests for this model. And then it was also great fun, of course, uh, to get these things to match. 
So the model you can get on the Comsol homepage includes the ear canal geometry. Uh, it also includes the ear canal and pinna geometry uh, connected together. And then it includes the eardrum impedance data, uh, um, the complex valued eardrum impedance data. So it's interpolation data. And then the model has two test setups. It has an, an occluded ear setup where we actually compute the transfer impedance uh, of the system. So you can compare that to the standard. And then it has an open ear uh, simulation where uh, acoustics from the outside uh, eye is incident on the open ear, including the pinna. So if you're interested, I highly invite you to go to the Comsol homepage. You just search for type 4.3 and you will get uh, immediately to this uh, model that you can download if you have a, a COPSL license. Just a few COPSL specifics, if there are any uh, COPSL users listening in. Um, the model is using the pressure acoustics frequency domain physics interface, so we're solving Helmholtz equation. And then a few words on the boundary conditions. Here there's a sketch of the geometry, including the pinna. So for the pinna, we are just using a sound hard wall boundary condition. So it's perfectly sound reflecting. And then for at the location of the eardrum, we are applying an impedance. So it's a complex valued frequency dependent impedance. Uh, and it's taken from interpolation data uh, available in the model. And then on the walls of the ear canal, we have applied the th uh, we are applying the thermoviscous boundary layer impedance. So it's a boundary condition that uh, gives you the thermoviscous boundary layer losses uh, that are become important in, in smaller geometries. So in this geometry, you only actually get a bit of additional damping at the very low frequencies, but it's uh, it's minimal, I would say. But anyways, we wanted to include it uh, in the model since it's yeah quite easy to, to include just using this boundary condition. And actually, in this particular case, the boundary condition is, is fully valid since we are sort of in, in not in really microacoustic applications yet. Yeah, so just a few technical uh, details here. Just a few, I want to finish off here with a few examples. Uh, so the first example here, we compared the type 3.3 uh, with the type 4.3 uh, ear simulators. And you can see the geometries here on the left, the type 3.3 and the right, the type 4.3. And we looked at the response from the ear entrance plane uh, to the eardrum. So we actually, you'll see in the next slide, we look at the, transfer impedance and we also look at the input impedance to the system. And I think actually this image also highlights uh, one of the reasons why um, this new uh, ear simulator was developed. And one of the reasons was of course for all these ear in the ear devices. So when you take an in the ear device and put it into your uh, coupler or your ear simulator, then in the old type 3.3 ear simulator, you could actually, if you put the device too far into the, the, the volume here, you could actually end up blocking um, the small slits that connect to the outer resonating volumes. Uh, and then you would actually alter the acoustic response of the system and you wouldn't get the correct acoustic response uh, any longer. This is not a problem with the type 4.3 ear simulator. And it, ha it has a more anatomically correct uh, geometry also. And the colors, by the way, in this plot here uh, are the uh, is the pressure response at one uh, at ten kilohertz. So again, here comparing the type three three and four three simulators. So type four three blue curve, type three three green curve. On the left, we look at the transfer impedance, and at the right, we look at the input impedance of the system, and we see the behavior. Uh, that sort of is known, and it's and you can really see that in in the at the higher frequencies, you know, above eight kilohertz, six, seven, eight kilohertz, there's a big discrepancy between the two systems, um, and this is, I guess, the other reason for uh, developing the the new full band type four three ear simulator to actually get uh, a more correct uh, high frequency response uh, of the ear simulator.
good. A final example, uh, and this is taken from the model that you can download on the Comsol homepage. This is the response of uh, an open ear configuration of the ear simulator uh, where the pinna is included. And it's a plane wave incident on uh, the ear. So an external sound source. And then uh, at the right, I'm just, uh, we are looking at uh, the response uh, at the eardrum. So some pressure level at the eardrum. Yeah, um, of course, um, what would have been really cool and very interesting to have is the response of a uh, measurement of an in-ear the in the ear device in the simulator, and then comparing the simulation results uh, with the measurement results. Um, and that's actually this is actually leading me to the uh, concluding remarks and the outlook. Uh, first of all. We developed a model based on a user feedback and a growing need for the combined virtual and physical tests. So it was really nice to get these requests uh, both from our, the Comsol customers, but also uh, via uh, my contacts at the HBK. They also got these requests for a virtual, a virtual version of the, the new uh, ear simulator. And then, as I mentioned, what I'm really looking forward to is, is some feedback on results comparing uh, measurements and model and simulation results uh, on, on, the, on the model, on the virtual prototype, um, on the simulation model. So yeah, that's something I really look forward to, to, to hearing about and, and seeing in the future. Yeah. Thank you very much for listening um, and yeah, I wish you, you have a great uh, continued conference. Thank you.